standing on Glasgow Central Station, waiting for my train to Weems Bay, and to pass the time I am having a coffee and marvelling at the station's breathtaking architecture. This is the start of a popular day trip for Glaswegians and others to the Isle of Bute, followed by a ferry across the Firth of Clyde to Rosse. My plan is to walk the island's southern peninsula, but on the way is Mount Stewart, which I cannot miss. So I will hop on this bus first as it goes into the estate. I have done my research. Built in 1880 for the third Marquess of Butte, following a disastrous fire three years earlier, its flamboyant Gothic Revival architecture immediately attracts the eye and camera. It is not old, but it has that feel about it. Photography is allowed, but no tripods or flash. I use the Zuiko 12-200 lens. It does not have an image stabilizer, but my Olympus EM1 Mark II does, so I relied on that and it works. This shot is handheld at a fifteenth of a second at 200 SO. At times, I encountered a huge dynamic range, and controlling noise was a problem, but at least the shutter speed here is a five hundredth of a second, so that helps. I also toured the grounds, finding the trees in this avenue fascinating. I continue to Kilchatan Bay. Well, I think that is how you pronounce the place. I might be wrong, so apologies. Now this is my path for the peninsula and Garak Head. I am lucky with the weather. Not the best for atmosphere, but ideal for detail and distant views. But I am being watched, and they are everywhere, and a submarine too for covert operations. What have I done? I found out that it was a rehearsal for a forthcoming exercise. The path had now narrowed and boggy in places, but that didn't matter, as I was wearing boots. Rounding the corner, I arrived at Glencullum Bay, relishing spectacular views down the Firth of Clyde and to the Isle of Arran, which became a much-used backdrop. The clarity of light brought out the texture and detail in the foreground rocks, and sharpness from front to back was guaranteed by using a wide-angle lens and f8. This still gave me a shutter speed of a thousandth of a second at 200 ISO, and of course, I didn't forget the hypervocal distance, did I? As height was gained, I experimented with wide angle and telephoto shots of Aaron, the weather again being a great help for clarity. I crossed a ridge overlooking a lock with a perfect reflection with views opening up northwards over the peninsula, and then took a waymarked path to the valley bottom. More views of Aaron. I have climbed those mountains in my youthful past, by the way. I eventually arrived at the ruins of St. Blaine's Church. I looked back to capture the view against the light. I spot-metered a highlight. Matrix might have been okay as highlights dominate the composition, but I didn't take a chance as Matrix could do anything, even though I could check with an electronic finder. One more climb and more views up the island, the bays now making an important contribution to the composition, courtesy of the telephoto end of my 12 to 200 lens. Yes, that contracts the perspectives. At last, 
The path brought me to the descent into Kilchatton Bay and its village, just in time for the return bus back to Rothsay and boat home. <laughs>